it was roughly half the time where I was like, why make the video? No one is going to watch it. It's going to suck. I don't feel like it. That's Nusair Yassin. Nusair started the channel Nas Daily with the mission of highlighting incredible people and places on the planet. He set a goal to post a video every day for 1,000 straight days. 1,000 straight days. And he did it. Amassing 12 million subscribers, 6 billion views, and starting two multi-million dollar companies along the way. He's living out every YouTuber's wildest dreams, right? People see the benefits of what you get because the benefits are very public, but the price is very private. I just lost my 60 relationship, you know, and in all honesty, that is the price I'm paying, you know, in which I committed more to my work than to my relationship. And that is not something to be proud of, but it is something that happened. And life is not just beautiful. So in this episode, you'll learn how Nusair manages outside distractions, why you need to listen to your inner voice, the sniper versus machine gun creator philosophy, and the actual cost of success. I spent the one minute this morning looking at your website and reviewing, remembering the whole story of your journey. And man, it seems like so much work. It doesn't leave a lot of time for scrolling Twitter, answering Instagram DMs, things like that. And you have a large following now. I'm sure even at the time you had a large following relative to most people listening to this show. So how did you manage your relationship to outside distractions that were not the work themselves? So it's very simple, right? The first thing I, I, I freed myself from material distractions. What are material distractions? Clothing, accessories, shopping, all that stuff became uh, unimportant to me, right? So I wear the same thing. I have the same t-shirt. I have the same shoes. I have the same uh, uh, look. I don't ever need to go change my looks. So that helped a lot. I don't have any material objects in my life. I didn't have a home. I didn't have anything in my home, nothing that I own. Nothing's important to own. So that helped a lot. Second thing is I was single when I started. I have nobody that I can commit to, nobody that requires time from me, nobody requires my attention. And that really helped a lot. Third is I made sure I don't have any financial hurdles. So I made sure to save enough money so that I don't have to worry about, about money. So as you can tell, I'm freeing myself. Oh, and fourth, friends. I definitely did not stay in touch with friends. I basically just disappeared off the planet. And I said, I'm going on a trip around the world. I'll see you when I'm back. Now, now, no friends, no girlfriend or boyfriend, no financial strain, no objects, no clothing, and no Twitter. For some parts, also, there was no drinking, no caffeine, no drugs, just me and a camera. Perfect. <laughs> so I love that you're talking about this. People don't talk about this. Like there, there are probably people out there who are looking at your life, your channel, the things that you have and saying, I want that. And they have an incomplete understanding of the trade-offs you made, yeah, the singular totally. focus you had to achieve that. I, I wish more people would think about that when they're comparing themselves to others because we do it all the right. time, but we don't, we don't ask ourselves like, am I willing to take the same path? Um, yeah. We don't reverse engineer it, see what that path is. Totally. People see the benefits of what you get because the benefits are very public, but the price is very private. The price that you pay is very private. So the price I paid, I think is lower than the than the benefit I got, so I'm good. But I still paid a price. You know, I don't have any close friends. I'm not very close with family. I'm not very, I just lost my 60 relationship. You know, and in all honesty, that is the price I'm paying, you know, in which I committed more to my work than to my relationship. And that is not something to be proud of, but it is something that happened. And life is not just beautiful. So yeah, I, you know, I continuously pay the price, but you know, the benefits are astronomical. Not, not financially, but the benefits are astronomical in terms of meaning, impact, joy. You know, not everybody not everybody's willing to pay the price. For some people, hanging out with their friends is better than anything in the world. And it is. And there's nothing wrong with that. Everybody has different uh, judgment. The second point in the timeline after day one of your 1,000-day journey is day 230, almost quit. And I want to talk about that moment a little bit, because I think that's something a lot of people can relate to. And at that point, you had created 230 videos, which is still almost twice as many videos as I have on my channel, having started YouTube a year ago. And so I'm halfway to almost quitting in, in, in your journey's terms. So I'd love to hear what that moment was like. 
You know, I put day 230 as a day I almost quit. But in reality, it was day 230, 229, 227, 222, 222, 190. It was roughly half the time where I was like, why make the video? No one is going to watch it. It's going to suck. I don't feel like it. So I put that day as a reminder that there were days in which I wouldn't be here talking to you. And I just feel so goddamn lucky to be here talking to you and being worthy of a podcast uh, because there was a possibility of me just going back, finding a job, and ditching this whole video thing. And I guess the reason why I didn't do that, the question is why did you not quit? Not why, everybody feels quitting, but why did you not quit? And I think there's always that intuition. You know, there's the, there's the outer voice and there's the inner voice. The outer voice is the news, it's your friends, it's your family, it's society. That's the outer voice. And there's the inner voice that tells you, this is wrong, this is right. Keep going or stop. Invest in this relationship or don't. And a lot of us listen to the outer voice. Not many of us listen to the inner voice. So I've learned, I'm learning slowly for the last 10 years, I'm learning how to mute the outer voice and how to amplify the inner voice. Oftentimes, the inner voice is more right than wrong, and the outer, vi- outer voice is oftentimes more wrong than right, uh, from my experience. So that's, that's kind of like why I kept going. The next point in the timeline that kind of blew my mind, on day 1,200, so 200 days after you finish your 1,000-day challenge, you launched a book. You're saying, I worked really hard. I had 25 days to write this book. That seems like such a huge effort that a lot of people listening to this would be like, 25 days to write a book. I'm not sure I could write a book in, in yeah. 25 months, 25 years. So tell me more yeah. about the narrative in your head that allowed you to take that project on and complete it in that period of time. It's called Parkinson's Law. Not Parkinson's disease, Parkinson's Law, which is something that has really transformed the way I look at life, which basically says work expands to the time allowed for it. If you allow two years to write a book, most likely you will work on it for two years. It does not guarantee the quality to be 10 times better than if you worked on it for one month. And so I gave myself 25 days to write this book. That is my deadline. And so all my work must fit into this deadline. And I am very obsessive about hitting deadlines. So with a thousand day videos, I had 24 hours, uh, 24 hours to create a video, right? That's my deadline. So my work can only expand to 24 hours to make the video. So the same concept of 24 hours to make a video, now 25 days to write a book. Work expands to the time allowed for it. Do you do, you do um, like a day-by-day planning in that period of time? Be like, okay, if that's 25 days, I have this goal of this many pages. Is that going to break down what each goal for each day is? How did you mark your progress through that period of time? With the book, I wasn't as like anal about marking progress and whatnot. It was just like you, you, you feel it when you're almost done or you're not. But with the videos, I've, I'm very anal about it, right? Which is, okay, by 11 a.m., I must have a video idea. By 2 p.m., I must have a script. By 5 p.m., I must shoot it. By uh, you know, 11 p.m., I must have it edited. That's really the work that must not expand beyond the time allowed for it. And so... It was very, very, like, it was very systemized. It was very, like, basically, all I'm trying to say is what I did is nothing special. Yes, making videos is hard. Creating content is hard. And 10, 12 hours a day spent on making videos is hard. But actually, you know, Muslims pray five times a day for 50 years. My mom prays five times a day for 50 years. She has to wake up at 5 a.m. She has to pray, be clean five times a day. It's really, really impressive. Uh, the ability to consistently create output, which in this case is praying. Uh, So what I'm trying to say is in the world today, we have billions of people that are highly committed to their craft. It's just, it's called religion. Basically, my work is a form of religion. I view it as a form of religion. And because I view it as important as religion to me, then I have no problem committing to it. And I think the reason why people don't commit is simply because they don't believe this thing is religious. They don't believe it. They don't believe this thing is important because if they truly believe this thing is important, the human body is capable of incredible things. I love drilling into this and and thank you for humoring me because one of the most common things I hear from creators is like they lack consistency. They feel demotivated. Like they let things expand. They're, they're looking for the muse and, and, and whatever. So it's, it's really helpful to actually talk to somebody who is 
so able to set deadlines, hit deadlines, stick to a schedule and see it as the work. And, and I like talking about this. So other people start to expand their thinking on it and see that right. they are also capable of doing this type of thing. Right. I mean, it's a very simple question. It's a very simple way to understand this better, which is, Jay, if this podcast does not get uploaded, will somebody die? No. Okay. So that's why sometimes it becomes very difficult to like assign value to what you're doing because you don't believe it's life and death. And maybe it's irrational from my side, but for every video I was making, I assigned a life and death value in which if this video does not get created, somebody will die, whether it's me or whether it's the viewer or whatever, because this video could help them so much, it will change their life. Yes, it's irrational. Yes, it's very self-absorbed and self-centered. But assigning importance to my work has helped me achieve it. How do you think about the goal line? Because I feel like a lot of people in your position and my position, we have this, this tendency to move the goalposts just as soon as we get to the goalposts. Always. What's your relationship to the goalposts? I feel like I'm never going to touch the fucking goalpost. <laughs> and it, it really bothers me because it's, it's, this, it's, it's, it's the reason I'm so distressed. Uh, but it is, uh, have you seen the Arnold documentary? No, 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 no. I haven't seen that one. No, okay. So it's, it's a new one. It's an Arnold documentary, right? But basically, like Arnold lived his life in three categories. As a bodybuilder, and then he became an actor, then he became a politician. So he has three chapters in his life. And I thought that was really interesting because I'm also trying to build three to four or five chapters in my life. So every time you close a chapter, there's a new chapter that comes out. And that chapter becomes as unreachable as ever because you start from zero. So yes, I've hit my goal post of a thousand video challenge. But then immediately the day after, my new goal post was a thousand person company. And then I'm like, fuck, I'm at zero. I'm back to zero. So I'm humbled. I'm embarrassed. I'm making mistakes. As an entrepreneur, I still make mistakes as an entrepreneur. So you have a thousand person thing. So I, you, you reach a goal and then shit, there's another goal post. So now I'm in the middle of my second act. My first act as a creator is done. I spent six years on it. I'm done with it. My second act now is an entrepreneur. And here I feel still as a beginner. And that, that's yeah. basically the source of my distress. Sometimes I ask myself, like I get in these moods where things in the business feel easy and then I get uncomfortable because I've just trained myself to believe that everything should be hard if it's worth doing. Why is this not hard anymore? <laughs> so I go and yeah. create some new hard thing. And there's another part yeah. of me that says, well, why don't I just enjoy the fruits of my labor for a little bit? It's tough. It's a tough balance. Very tough balance. Yeah. There's something about humans. We're attracted to challenges. We're attracted to uh, hardships and, uh, Maybe that's a good thing at the end of the day. You know what's hard? Making a car electric. I'm glad we're doing it. After a quick break, Nusair and I talk about his technology company and what his days actually look like. It may surprise you, so stick around. We'll be right back. If you know me, you know how much I believe in memberships. My membership is the core of my business, and I believe that earning a living directly from your audience is one of the most sustainable ways for you to become a professional creator as well. So I wanna tell you about today's sponsor, Uscreen. Uscreen is a beautiful all-in-one platform that helps content creators earn a living from their videos by unlocking predictable recurring revenue. You can host private live streams for your members, build an on-demand catalog of premium video content, and Uscreen gives you a community hub to interact with your members too. They can access your community from their mobile phone, so your membership is right there in their pocket. With a Uscreen account, you get video hosting, an out-of-the-box website, full payment and subscription management, and plenty of third-party integrations too. And Uscreen makes it easy to get set up. You get access to powerful website themes that are fully brandable with no coding skills required. Uscreen is the platform for building a video membership site that is great for generating a sustainable income stream for professional creators. To try Uscreen, click the link in the description and let them know that Jay sent you. Okay, so we're moving into the next chapter of the NOS universe. First, it started with NOS Academy. Today, you have NOS IO. And you said that you are uh, the CEO of the technology company as well. So you are focusing on running a technology company, running the academy, running the YouTube channel, 
how does how does your day look like now split across those three massive efforts all in their own right it looks bad it looks really bad a lot of times people the outer voice tells me that you should be only ceo of one company the inner voice tells me it's possible to do it with two so i'm doing it with two i'm very lucky to have strong people with me i'm very lucky to have chief operating officers that uh, push the envelope and help me achieve much more than i could possibly achieve as myself i think when people think of a CEO and a company, they think the CEO is doing everything in the company. Actually, the CEO does nothing. The CEO just like, all the, the only thing that I should do is always think about how to push the envelope forward and ask people to do the, the work and find the money and find the people. That's it. Three, three responsibilities. I don't need to code. I don't need to edit. I don't need to travel. I don't need to even book my flights. Somebody does it for me. So I do save a lot of time by not having to do this stuff. And I just need to become a better decision maker. And that's equally hard. I mean, you still show up on the channel. You're still talent as well. Like you're, <laughs> yeah. not, you're, not, you're not removed from that. And that's, that's not a small thing, right? Because I'm sure you have to prep for that. You have to get in the mind space for it. Maybe you're naturally just good at getting in front of the camera and going. But I imagine like even being the talent in the creator side of the business takes something. Ah, yeah. So that's the thing that other CEOs don't have, which is that that's the extra thing is being the on the screen talent and having to go to Greenland and make that video because that consumes a lot of time. Like yesterday I had a shoot, today I had a shoot, tomorrow I have two shoots. I have four brand deal shoots this week, which is a bit over, over the top. I'm trying to reduce that. I've kind of come to the conclusion that, you know what? I don't need an extra follower. I don't want an extra follower. Like, I think we're done. I think we're good with 65 million. That's enough. I don't want another selfie. I don't want another viral video. Like, that's not my... So, you know, it's like with creators, there's three things you can index on. There's, there's three things you can focus on. And you need to decide what they are. Attention, impact, money. So for, for the last seven years, and I'm being very frank, right? The first two years, I focused a lot on attention and impact. The last year... I focus a lot on attention. So attention and impact, no focus on money. What does that mean? Like, I don't need ads, no brand deal, nothing, and I don't care, right? I just want to make videos that change the world. So I did that for uh, four or five years. Then the last year, I said, I'm going to focus on attention a bit more. So I'm going to make one-minute videos. I'm going to make a lot of them about anything. And of course, we think everything is impactful, but still, let's just increase the, qu the, the quantity. So I focused a lot on attention. We got a lot of views, but I then realized, wait a minute, there's no money and there's not as much impact. This is actually kind of useless. So now I don't care about attention. Impact, I am impacted out. Like I am, I want to take a one year break from impact and just be like, let me just be an entrepreneur and just build a technology business that has good investors and that's profitable. So forget that. So now I'm really focused on money because you need to find a way to pay 100 people every month. And so now my focus really for the end of the year is money. And so, but, but those change and people need to ask themselves, you need to go from one to another, nothing is forever. And then by the end of the year, I'll yeah. probably be done with money. I'll go back to attention or impact. It, that's that, that should be a calculation in everybody's brain every single month. I love the concept of seasons and a season doesn't have to be three months or four months. A season is like, Hey, right now focus needs to change. And you can choose when to end that season when you want, you know, <laughs> but it's, it's, it's really freeing to think in terms of going in a new season, things are changing. Yeah, exactly. I listened to your interview on the Mind Valley podcast and you were, you were using this analogy to compare how some people are snipers and some people have a machine gun. Uh, and you said that you are a machine gun person. Can you talk about that? Hey, real quick before they respond, I want to let you know that there are bonus audio only episodes of Creator Science that air every Tuesday when we don't publish a video. Episodes like number 156, where I talk with my editor, Connor, about our first year on YouTube, or number 37 with Ali Abdal. If that's interesting, just search for Creator Science wherever you listen to podcasts. All right, back to the show. Yeah, so snipers are the people who uh, disappear for three hour, three years and come up with a Netflix documentary and make it to number one. And then they go disappear for another five years. That's a sniper. You just became successful from one chance, one try. But a machine gun is somebody who makes a thousand videos in a thousand days and 700 of them are failures and 300 of them are mediocre success. That's the definition of my life. 
creating a lot of small things and hoping that something sticks because I'm not smart enough to point and shoot. I need to just continuously shoot to try to get lucky. And I think uh, people need to decide what kind of personality they are, uh, whether they're snipers or whether they are machine guns. Do you ever aspire to be a sniper? It depends on the kind of battle you're going for. If you're going, you know, if, 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 if you have 500 enemies coming at you at once, you don't want to be a sniper because it's not effective. You want to be a machine gun. So I, I actually enjoy being a machine gun uh, because I have 500 interests. I have 500 challenges. I have 500 problems I want to fix. And I just, I cannot, uh, I think I'm not lucky enough to have one big problem in my life. I have many small problems. So I do enjoy building small things for many problems. Uh, you know that famous saying, right? Would you rather fight a horse-sized duck or a hundred <laughs> duck-sized horses? <laughs> I mean, you know, what's your answer, Jay? Oh, man. Uh I think I think I would probably try to fight the the horse sized duck, but um, I don't know that I'm an effective sniper. I think that I think a lot of people delude themselves into thinking they're an effective sniper and try to play a sniping game, which actually slows them down from getting the outcome that they want because they they aren't there yet. Mm, It's it's hard to come out of the gates as a sniper. I feel seems like you need specialized training. Totally. Yeah, totally. Totally. I think we're born machine guns. (laughs) (laughs) A lot of people look at people in your position and think that it's still just you and you're shooting the videos and you're editing the videos and you're pocketing $11 million and uh, everything is just gravy. And I love shedding light on the fact that there's a big team here. There's a big plan here. There's a big goal here. There are also struggles here. There are big trade-offs here. These are all interesting nooks and crannies of the creator world that we just don't talk about enough. Totally. Totally. And, and to get here, it was not a straight line. And if somebody is listening to this and they have doubts in their brain, if they have fears in their brain, if they think they're not a good manager, if they think they're not a good creator, if they think they're like not making enough money, trust me, I felt that yesterday and today and tomorrow and the last seven years and the last 70 years. It is the most normal thing to fail. And I failed so many times building this company and I'm still not sure this company is going to succeed. So you're not alone in those thoughts. Those thoughts are in every creator's brain and entrepreneur's brain. 